Michael and his girlfriend Sarah were invited along with their friends Paul and Susan to a new restaurant that just opened. They won a competition on the radio and were very excited to be able to walk into a restaurant and order anything on the menu and not worry about the price. They were all students and didn't have much money to spare with all the expense of college. When they all arrived at the restaurant, they were admiring the outside of it. They heard a lot about it and knew it was very expensive which was another reason them winning a free meal was a great win. When they sat down in the restaurant and looked at the menu, they appreciated more not having to pay as the meals were so expensive. They ordered their food and ate their meals and were really impressed. When it came to desserts, Michael was the only one to order that by chocolate. The rest ordered just plain ice cream they relaxed after the meal drinking coffee. When they were finished and decided to go home, they had ordered a taxi, and while they were waiting, Michael saw a truck coming straight for him and screamed. He was blown off the footpath and thrown across the street as a chocolate ice cream truck ran him over. Michael knew he could open his eyes now because they would still be across the street, thinking he was ran over and killed. Little did they know this accident had been planned for months by a friend of his who was a stunt driver. The reason he faked his own debt was because he owed a lot of money to the wrong people and he had planned on telling his friends he was alive when it was safe to do so. They worried if his body wasn't picked up, yet by a fake ambulance. That was a part of the plan, then a real ambulance will arrive. But Michael didn't have to worry, because a sign pole that was hit outside the shop by the truck, saying fresh ice cream on sale here, fell and hit him on the head and he was killed instantly. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you want to stay up to date on new content, then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content. Joseph moved in with his wife Lisa to a house in a secluded area, but that suited him fine. They came from the big bright lights of New York City and wanted to move away from the hectic city lifestyle. At first Joseph and his wife hated the quietness and stillness of the area. After a few weeks Joseph found himself going crazy when he was trying to go to sleep at night with the sound of the waterfall nearby. It haunted him and when he eventually did fall asleep, he dreamt of stormy weather or the waterfall while he was drowning in it. His wife seemed to just sleep through the night and it never bothered her no matter how loud or annoying it got. He wished he had earplugs but couldn't believe they would do any good, as the sound was so loud. It was driving him crazy. The next day when he got up, he just sat down, nearly falling asleep in front of the TV, because he couldn't get no sleep at night. One night it was different. 
It was almost like the waterfall was calling his name to come to it. The sound felt much, much different. It was like music to his ears. It was like the complete opposite of what it was like before. He was smiling at how appetizing the sound seemed to be. He got up from bed and got dressed and walked towards the waterfall. The noise of it was like beautiful, relaxing, soothing music to his ears. Then suddenly he saw the most beautiful lady. He remembered then. How could he forget? She was just standing next to the waterfall, waiting for him to embrace her. And that is just what he was going to do. Before he saw her skin, colour change. And then he had realised the horror and what he kept locked away in a box in his mind and never wanted to open again. His wife had drowned in the waterfall a week ago and he did everything he could to help her, but he just couldn't save her. He then realised who was the woman up in the house with him. Then he realised, of course, there was no woman up in the house with him. It was just his mind and the waterfall playing tricks with him. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you want to stay up to date on new content, then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content. Patty was exhausted from a long list of job interviews she had to conduct today. She sat down relaxing, watching TV with a cup of coffee. She wondered was it a mistake having a cup of coffee, as it would more than likely keep her awake all night. She needed something to calm her nerves anyway, as her day was hectic, so she decided to enjoy her cup. Suddenly, her cell phone rang. It was a private number, which she usually never answered. But something told her to answer the phone. When she did, she heard a familiar voice. Hello, Patty, a woman said. Patty said, hello, who is this? The woman said, Patty, this is going to come as a shock to you, but you are in grave danger. Please don't say anything for a minute. I am your future self. You are in grave danger because I am speaking to you from the other side. I can't show you myself because if you see yourself dead, it will affect a lot of different things. You need to look in your attic right now. There is a ladder in the hall that you were using to paint the hall. Now what I need you to do to stay safe is climb that ladder, look to see is there a device like a bomb in your attic, and trust me, it will be there. It should be detonated in five minutes, but I'll tell you how to safely dispose of the bomb. Don't worry, don't try to get out of your house, because the house is rigged. If you try to leave by window or door, it will activate the bomb. Please don't waste any more time. Do it now. Patty was in shock when the person hung up. She wondered. Well, she knew. It had to be some sort of prank. How could her future self be talking to her? But just in case there was something to it, because she did have an open mind, she got the ladder and put it under her attic. She climbed the ladder and put on the light and took a look around. She got a shock when she saw in front of her the person she refused an impersonation job for, a new show on the local TV channel. The person put a rope around her neck and said, you bitch, you should have given me that job. Then as the rope was around Patty's neck, she was pushed down. 
she then hung from the rope while the woman placed a typed suicide note on the ground next to her body. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you want to stay up to date on new content, then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content. Tony was lying on the operating table. After being in a near fatal accident, the doctors were performing an emergency operation on him, and they knew that he was dying, but they kept trying to save him. God knows enough people died in this hospital lately, a doctor said. Tony could hear them speaking. Suddenly he heard one of the nurses say, We have lost all vital signs. He then found himself falling in through a tunnel, and he remembered hearing about a dark tunnel and a light people see just before they die. He then was looking down at the operation table from floating above. He wondered was this an out-of-body experience? Was he dead? He must be, if there were no vital signs. Then suddenly he heard a nurse speaking to him. Don't give up. It's not your time to go. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. Don't give up whatever you do. Keep fighting. The nurse had a strong Irish accent. She continued to speak. Tony, you have so much more to do in this world. Don't give up. Come back. Don't leave, your time to go is not now. Suddenly Tony wasn't floating over the bed anymore, but he was back in his body and could hear a doctor say, Wow, that was something else. He was almost gone for ten whole minutes. A nurse said, Vital signs are stable. Tony smiled and a few minutes later he was speaking to the nurse. But he realised it wasn't the nurse that saved him by asking him to not give up. The nurse said, You gave us all a fright, Tony, but what just happened was nothing short of a miracle. You were dead for ten whole minutes. Tony said, Could I please thank the nurse with the Irish accent, please? She kept telling me don't give up, and that is what made me pull back from crossing over. The doctor said, Tony, there is no one here with an Irish accent. Well, luckily we don't have the nurse with that accent around her anymore. Tony asked, Why, what's wrong with her? The nurse said, The only nurse around here with an accent from Ireland was this crazy woman. She murdered 14 of our patients, and when she was found out, she shot herself in the head. Just before she did shoot herself, she started rambling on about she would make sure we all pay for getting her caught. Suddenly the woman froze and the doctors, when the nurse with the accent from Ireland appeared and said, I made my penance after I killed those patients, and I proved it by bringing this patient back to life. But as for the doctors and nurses, who were the reason I was caught experimenting with murder, well that's a different story. Within two minutes, everyone in the room were killed besides Tony. Soon after, the police were called, and Tony was arrested for multiple homicide, of the nurses and doctors that were killed by the ghost of the nurse who saved him. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you enjoy the content then make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of new content.